Hey, I'm Bijan Jamshidi, and this is the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 Race, a complete wheel and pedal setup for sim racing on Xbox and PC. Included in the box is the wheelbase with its race management display and 7.2 Newton meter K drive direct drive force feedback motor, the hand stitched leather wheel with paddle shifters, the modular Velocity 1 control unit to control critical car systems, and the aluminum pedal set equipped with dynamic brake tech load cell braking and quick stowing clutch system. Setup is simple and easy. You'll find everything you need inside the first slim box you pull out, which has the wheel, control unit, power cables, USB cables, pedal grip pads, and screws. And the only tool you'll need is stored inside the right wing of the wheelbase. If you're clamping this onto your desk, use the big hex head to screw the female head counterclockwise. This will lower the clamps on the bottom of the base. Do this on both sides. Once it's low enough, slide your base in, screw clockwise until it's tight, and your base is all set. The base also has threaded holes on the bottom for if you want to hard mount it to a rig. Next, grab the control unit. By default, it's set up to mount to the right side of the base. You'll see this little slot. If you want to mount it to the left side, Unscrew the plate and screw it on the other side of the control unit. Then slide it to the base and use the small included screws to screw clockwise until they're tight. Next, grab your wheel and use the guidelines on your wheel to line up with the guidelines on your base. Once they're lined up, pull the quick release lock towards you, slide it into the hub, release the lock, and that's it. For the pedals, you have flat grip pads for flat floors. You have bumpy grip pads for carpeted floors and you have threaded holes on the bottom for if you want to hard mount it to a rig, which personally I suggest unless your pedals are mounted up against the wall, as it'll really allow you to use the load cell brake pedal to its fullest potential without the pedals slipping. Next, grab the USB cables. Each cable is Velcro tied and has a picture of what that cable is supposed to plug into. You don't have to plug them in where the picture tells you, but you should. Connect the control unit to the number three USB-C expansion port, Plug the pedals into the number two USB-C expansion port and plug the USB-C cable into the Xbox slash PC USB-C port and the other end to your computer or Xbox's USB-A port. Next, download the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 tuner software from the Microsoft Store. This is how you can change settings, keybinds, lighting, and more. First, you're gonna wanna make sure everything is up to date by going to the firmware tab and updating the system firmware and RMD UI firmware. This will take a while. Once you're up to date, let's talk about what you see on the race management display or RMD. In the middle, you have the dashboard which shows your live access telemetry. This tells you the position of the wheel, how much input you're giving the throttle, brake, clutch, and analog paddles, which are these paddles under the paddle shifters. On top, you have your RPM indicator, on the left side, you have the control input, which shows you what buttons you're currently pressing, and things we'll dive more into later, such as your K drive strength, surface type, and RMD mode. Now for the right side, you have your current profile, the number of degrees you could turn the wheel from lock to lock, with 900 degrees being the default, what firmware version you're on, your mic status, headset connection, Bluetooth connection, and the platform the wheel is set to play on. Now, let's play around with the RMD's settings menu. On the bottom right of the wheel, you'll have this dial that says E2 above it and two buttons inside, which are your select and back button. Scroll the dial in any direction and you can change virtually anything about the wheel, the base, the control unit, and the pedals. Let's start with the top left. Scroll to the platform menu and press the select button. This lets you select what platform you want to play on between Xbox and PC. Scroll to the platform you want, click select to choose or back to cancel your selection, and you're ready to race on the platform shown on the bottom right of the RMD. The next setting is profile. There are 10 profiles, which is great if you have multiple drivers or different button maps for different games. Anything you change while in a profile will also automatically be saved. Next is the K drive, which is your force feedback motor adjustments. The first setting is tuning, which controls the speed of response of the direct drive motor. The higher the value, the faster the motor will respond. There's track, which is at 100%, so it'll respond the fastest. There's rally at 80%, 
and there's Drift at 60%, which is the least responsive, at least for the preset modes. If you don't like any of those options, you can select Custom all the way on the right and change it to whatever your heart desires. The next K drive setting is Strength, which controls the peak response force of the direct drive motor. In layman terms, the higher the setting, the higher the resistance when hitting things like bumps and curbs, and when you're turning the wheel while stationary. It'll feel more like a real car. The presets are low, medium, and high, which are 20, 50, and 75%, and there's a custom one to set it to whatever you want. Next is Center Spring. This controls the strength at which the wheel tries to return to the center once it's turned left or right. The higher the value, the higher the force the wheel will exert to return to its center point. And just like with the strength setting, there's low, medium, and high, which is 25, 50, and 75%, and custom, which goes from zero to 100%. Lastly for the K drive setting is damping, which controls the resistance felt when steering a vehicle. Now this isn't the same as the strength setting. The difference here is that the damping is general stiffness of the vehicle itself, whereas strength is for race events like bombs, curbs, etc. Moving away from the K drive, we have the RMD menu. Selecting live output displays the live vehicle telemetry data such as fuel, battery, tire pressure, speed, engine RPM, lap times, lap time delta, what lap you're on, your position, and more. You can also choose between three different output styles depending on what kind of information you want to see, ranging from your regular car's gauge cluster, to when you press the car's sport button, to an F1 and GT style cluster. Now, in order to see the telemetry on PC, open the Velocity One Tuner app, go to the RMD tab, click Launch Now under the Expanded Telemetry Output section, and select whatever game you want to play. Another option is by downloading a free piece of software called SimHub. It does the same thing, but supports more games. The last RMD setting is the RPM indicator, which changes the direction of your RPM indicator. Next is button mapping. Now, on the wheel, you have ABXY buttons, LT and RT, magnetic paddle shifters, analog paddles that act like triggers on a controller, dials, and another dial with a D-pad in the middle. For the wheel, you can only map the RS1, RS2, and E1 dial within the RMD. If you want to map other buttons, you'll need to do it in-game. Now, for the control unit, you can map almost any button you want from the switch that's covered by the cool switch guard, the engine start button, the dials, the red buttons, and the switches. The only button on the control unit you can't remap is the K-Drive stop button, which is always an emergency shutdown button for the Velocity 1 race. Now, as for what you can assign, you can assign any function that the Velocity 1 race is capable of, or assign it in-game, which allows you to map them directly to vehicle systems like the ignition, your engine start, wipers, headlights, turn signals, and so on. Okay, next you have the wheel settings. First is rotation, which, as I mentioned when going over the RMD dashboard, is the amount of degrees you could turn the wheel from lock to lock. 900 degrees is the standard and the default, but you can be a non-standard racer if you want to be. The other wheel setting is dead zone, which, if you weren't already able to tell by the name, lets you add a dead zone to the center point, which means you'll need to move the wheel away from the center a little more to start registering movement. Next, we have pedals, which lets you adjust the dead zone and sensitivity of each pedal. This is something you'll need to play around with to see what you like. And while we're on the subject, this pedal set comes with a few nice features, such as a quick stow clutch pedal, pedals that have adjustable resistance, you can move the brake pedal left or right, and it has dynamic brake tech load cell braking. What this means is that the braking is measured by the amount of pressure you're putting on the brake pedal rather than the distance the brake pedal is traveling. And what that means for you is that it'll feel more realistic. Next, we have the lower paddle buttons, which you can map to either the clutch, brake, throttle, and handbrake. And you also have dead zone adjustments. Next is the headset mixer. Here, you can change the volume of your headset, which you can plug into the right side of the base using a standard 3.5 millimeter connection. You can also adjust your chat mix, which increases the volume of your game or comms, depending on what you want to hear the most. You can increase or decrease your microphone monitoring, which projects your voice to your headphones so you hear yourself. You can adjust your mic gain, which makes your microphone louder to others. And you have sound equalizer with five different preset EQ settings. 
Next, we have the lighting settings to change the color, brightness, and effect of the wheel and control unit. The number of colors you can choose within the RMD is limited compared to the Velocity One Tuner app, so I recommend using the app just so you can get the color you really want. Speaking of, every setting I've just gone through with you is also adjustable within the Velocity One Tuner Windows app. There's also a mobile app you can connect to the wheel via the app link setting, and you can also adjust a lot of the settings as well. Now lastly for the RMD settings, we have System, which has your current firmware version, calibration of the wheel, pedals, and lower paddles, RMD screen brightness, RMD screen timeout, wheel pairing to pair an existing or new wheel to the base, and reset to default. As for what else you get outside of the RMD, you get the Xbox guide, view, share, and menu buttons, and you get the system power on and off and emergency shutdown power down button. So that's a quick technical overview of the Turtle Beach Velocity One race. If you're interested in picking up one of these bad boys, click on the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, I'm Bijan Jamshidi, and have a great day every day. Peace.